Good morning. I'm Chloe Cole, and I am a detransitioner who transitioned medically as a 13-year-old girl. Today is special because it marks the one-year anniversary of me speaking out on my experience of enduring the worst medical scandal in American history. Or it would have been if the Louisiana Health and Welfare Committee let me speak when I was here. You didn't allow me to testify last year. It begs the question, what is so scary about a detransitioner? Is it the fact that we lend proof to the idea that so-called gender-affirming care is a complete scan? Is it because it makes it harder to ignore institution institutionally backed medical abuse carried out on children? Can you no longer turn a blind eye to it in favor of the medical lobbyists that stand between you and your moral compass? I exist. I will speak despite your best efforts. Doctors medicalized me starting puberty blockers and testosterone at 13 years old. I didn't know what things like cervixes or ovulation were or how the full menstrual cycle worked yet, but I was cleared by adults who had a full understanding of such things to make a decision that would affect my fertility, the onward development of my sexual organs, and the complex processes unique to me as a woman. I was given a double mastectomy, and my breasts, an important part of my sexuality and future motherhood, were removed in the name of political ideology at only 15 years old. And when I went to my surgeon to get help from my complications, like fluid leaking out of my areolar grafts, I got dismissed in a Zoom call with advice that gave me a skin infection. Try to ignore that. You can't. When you attempt to ignore that, you're also ignoring the thousands of detransitioners I personally corresponded with. I am just the tip of the iceberg. You are so incredibly fortunate that there aren't dozens of us testifying in front of you today, but that will come soon if you keep ignoring this problem. You have a chance to act now. My parents were told by my doctors that there was no choice other than having a dead daughter or a living trans son. My parents' biggest mistake was trusting them. We all thought, up until recently, that we could trust our daughter. Thank you. We have a question, Representative Schlegel. Hey, I remember you coming last year. I think I, I spoke with you. Um, you're, you're very brave. I'm just wondering, because we're, we're hearing this terminology of watchful approach. Was that ever an option that was given to you or? No. Um, it was never suggested to wait. In fact, I was fast tracked into this and I was, as a patient, I was pretty much the one leading the course of my trend of my, of my treatment rather than the other way around. Mm -hmm. and, and and so your parents were told that about... Right. Yeah. Yeah, they weren't given any other option but to transition me. They were told that. I knew exactly what I wanted at 13 years old, that children already know what gender they are from a young age. And so I w it was more likely that I would regret going through puberty. And were I not allowed to transition as I wanted to, it was very likely that I would commit suicide, even though I wasn't suicidal until I was actually on these treatments. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And how old are you now? I'm 18. You're 18. Okay. And how, like, do you still experience gender dysphoria or? I do. You do? Um, but it's it's gotten better as I've just lived in my body and accepted things as they are. Mm -hmm. Do you receive counseling? Not her? currently. Okay. Okay. Well, thank you so much for coming. I know you came a long way. Thank you, Representative. Uh, next. My name is Prisha Mosley. I was 15 years old when trans-identified adults found me online and convinced me that I had been born in the wrong body. After a rape at 14 and multiple mental illnesses, including borderline personality disorder, this was easy to do. My hatred for myself and fear of re-victimization was exploited by the adults around me who convinced me that I needed drugs and surgery to be myself. At 17, high doses of testosterone were injected into my anorexic body, and one year later, my healthy breasts were removed. Testosterone had severe and irreversible impacts that I will live with for the rest of my life. My large, painful shoulders match my overgrown heart and increased risk for heart attack and stroke. My back and joints ache constantly. Even as I sit before you, it hurts to speak. I am suffering with severe vaginal atrophy, which prevents me from even using tampons. Large parts of my adult life were taken from me as a mentally ill teenager, and I mourn this loss every day. My trauma was never looked into, and my desire to hurt myself was supported by my doctors and the community around me. I was exploited in my most vulnerable time, and body parts were removed from me. Two weeks before I was written, written my letter of recommendation for breast removal, I was in the mental hospital for another suicide attempt. My 
My letter said that I was stable. My surgeon didn't care about the scars and fresh wounds all over my body when he looked at them when he made me take off my shirt. He was ready to cut me up more. Now I live in a painful body that no longer belongs to me. The trans community tells you to kill your old self with a dead name and everything, and I did. The girl I was was gone and has been replaced by a medical experiment. I support any bill that prevents someone else from suffering the harms of gender-affirming care. Go ahead. We have no questions. My name is Senator Angela Hill. I represent the 40th District in Mississippi, and I've worked several years on consensus and education on passing the REAP Act, the Restrict Experimental Adolescent Procedures Act that was recently passed in Mississippi's uh, legislative session. What I want to do is focus on things that have not been spoken on. Um, the medical associations typically are in agreement in the, in the United States that these procedures are necessary and they're safe and they're okay. But what we need to concentrate on is what some of these physicians are saying behind the scenes when they don't know anybody is listening that might be in opposition. Recently at Vanderbilt Medical Center in Tennessee, um, there LGBT expert doctor was caught on tape talking about how financially uh, beneficial these type surgeries are to the medical institutions. And when that video uh, became widespread, uh, that university did suspend those procedures. And the Tennessee uh, legislature and the governor begin investigating um, the, the clinic at Vanderbilt. Also, we recently had a whistleblower at Washington University Gender Clinic in St. Louis, a lady who was a case manager for four years, basically came out and became a whistleblower and talked about in her testimony to the AG in Missouri of how dangerous some of these procedures, these hormones were to these children and that she felt like they were being fast-tracked and not really given informed consent. And what really stuck out to me was the quote that she gave that many doctors she worked around um, had told her um, about the patients that they were treating. The quote was, we're building the plane while we're flying it. And that was so concerning to me. No child should be on a plane. That Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, Senator, for your testimony. We do have questions for you. Uh, Representative Cox, you have a question? No, I have a question for the lady with the uh, in the middle. So you were groomed, am I concerned? Am I, am I saying that right? Were you groomed by somebody? Absolutely. I... I wasn't using that word at first because I thought it was too polarizing, but what happened to me fits the very definition of grooming. I was online in anorexia communities and transgender adults came in and told us that the reason we couldn't eat was because we were born in the wrong body. And how, how deep did that, how deep did that go into your spirit and soul? I mean, if you can answer that. I mean, I believed the adults around me and they would use random things as evidence that I was a boy. So for example, I was posting about my struggles with my eating disorder online and I was so underweight that I started growing hair all over my body to regulate my body temperature. And adults told me that this was a sign that my body was fighting to be a boy. Yeah, sort of like when I was growing up, the fastest girl could climb the biggest tree and they said she was a tomboy. Well, she's got eight kids now and living well. Thank you, Mr. Jim. Thank you, Representative. Representative Schlegel. Um, for, the, for the young lady, I'm sorry, what is your name again? It's Precia. Precia. Um, the counselor side is definitely coming out in me, hearing your story. I just wanted to acknowledge it. I mean, you have obviously experienced so much trauma, and just we are all listening to your story. And so thank you so much for coming today. Thank you. 